Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Unenlightened Generalists. Thanks for joining us here today. Before we dive in, if you would go ahead and remember to like this video and please subscribe and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever we post a new video. So I am going to keep this week's video pretty simple because I have started my first week of my MLIS, my Master's in Library and Information Sciences degree. Now, as you probably know from my previous videos, I already have a Master's degree in Creative Writing. Despite the fact that I've done a lot of academic stuff in the past, doing this program requires a rigorous self-schedule and a lot of dedication and a fair bit of willpower. So I actually want to talk really quickly about the things that I do to make this program program feasible for me because I think some of them might help you if you're entering a similar program or frankly any intense period of your life that requires a lot of structure. All right, so the first thing that I did was as soon as I knew that I was getting into an MLIS program, I knew that I needed more experience in the field. So I started to seek out all the information that I could find about the field. I spent a bunch of time on Reddit searching around there are some and anytime that there are a lot of questions being asked that's a great time to um, answer some of your own because i guarantee that anything that you're curious about someone else out there in the world has also been curious about i also spent a lot of time reading books on the subject so i actually got a couple of books that you know i found that were recognized as textbooks in the field and I purchased a couple of other really interesting books, too, that gave me a strong overview of what libraries and librarianship is actually like from the inside. And that was really just fun on one hand and also really helped me get an understanding of what the program might be like, because then I could see, well, here are the things that a program is going to try to be teaching you. Here's what I can do beforehand to fill in some of those gaps and start building a learning process for myself before I've even begun. The next thing that I needed to do was begin like building a structure for myself in here. I needed to prepare for the new workload and the new commitment that I was going to be making. So that meant, first off, talking to other people in my life who rely upon me, who are involved with me. This is my wife. This is, you know, the, the people around me who are closest to me. I needed to bring them into the process and let them know what I was experiencing, what I was seeing, what I thought I would end up having to do in order to complete this, this course. I'm very lucky to have people in my life who are incredibly supportive of me, and I hope that's the case for you too. If you don't have people right next to you who are understanding of this, that's okay. A lot of people don't. Know that there are people out there who will care about your experience. You can find so many wonderful communities out there that you can connect with and you can seek this sort of peer-to-peer -peer support from that will help you succeed. So whatever you do, know, just like with the asking questions thing, know that someone else out there is having the same experience as you. Your experience is part of the human experience and know that there is support out there. You just, you just have to be patient and try to find it. So after doing that, I started to really, you know, uh, think about what is this program going to be like? You know, I've done one master's program, but I can't assume that because I've done one master's program, all master's programs are similar. I knew that this was a zero residency program. This is an asynchronous online program. Both of my other programs that I've done were low residency. That meant that I had to do a lot of the work myself. There wasn't a lot of handholding. It was essentially just packet work. Uh, you know, once a month you check in with your instructor and you do the work. And that requires a lot of self-dedication and structure. So I knew I could do that. However, I wasn't sure about a program like this. What was it actually going to be like? The next stage in my kind of pre-planning process was to begin taking stock of the things in my life that I needed to do, the things in my life that were important to me. And I needed to start building a schedule, a structure around those. Now I found that a modified form of block scheduling works very well for me when I have to be diligent on my own and create my own structure. What you wanna do is make sure that you have a scaffolding, a structure in life that is going to help you truly meet the uh, balance of your own needs. Now, you, some of you are probably familiar with Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, right? Mal Maslow's pyramids. The idea is that there is a conceptual pyramid 
uh, of needs, of human needs. These are intrinsic things that you need. Now, every person might have some differentiation on what those needs actually are, but the, the kind of core of them remain the same. Now, at the top, oftentimes, there's something called self-actualization. This is uh, a concept of you are you are fully fulfilled with some aspect of your life, right? Or, or hopefully your life as a whole. There's a sense of deep kind of contentment in in your life. There's also such a thing as relaxation and rest, uh, relationships, family. These are very important things. Um, oftentimes near the bottom are those base needs. Do you have food? Do you have shelter? Do you have Wi-Fi and a phone <laughs> these days, you know? Uh, do you have income? What is your work? Do you have physical health, personal health, mental health, uh, relationships? I said that one already. Do you have a groundwork, basically, for everything that you're, you know, you need to do? And... For part of that, too, is this artistic need. So do you have artistic... Is your artistic need being met? There's just so much stuff to consider here, and you can kind of put that in layers on your pyramid. So I knew that I needed a structure that took care of my personal hierarchy of needs really well. And this block schedule format does that. Now, it puts a lot of pressure on your life as well. I ran this during the last year of my first master's program, and it was very intense, but I did manage to get it working. Uh, and so this is something that I knew I wanted to implement again this time. But I needed to do it a little bit differently. I needed to add in more R&R, &R, and I needed to add in a little bit more time for my family, for fun, for me, and for some of the other projects that I needed to do. Last time, I focused purely on work and my master's program, and that just wasn't healthy. You shouldn't be focusing on just work and a master's program. You need to have some element of artistic expression in your life. You need to have some uh, you know, method of pure relaxation and fun. And you need to have some like human connection. You need to have a community of some sort, peers, friends, people you're spending time with regularly. So that means at least a couple of times a week, hopefully more. And then as human beings, we also need health. We need uh, to be physically fit and we need to be mentally fit. And those two things actually are deeply connected. So <laughs> um, I needed to find a way to build all that in. Luckily, I think I did. So you can see now, this is an example of what my block schedule looks like. I think it actually suits me very well. I'm pretty happy with it. The important thing to remember about a block schedule like this is when you're just starting out, you need to actually identify double the amount of time that you think you need for literally anything. So if you're new to this, don't try to implement a block schedule the first day of a new semester. Implement it a few weeks ahead of time. Get a feel for it. See if it really takes you as long as it, you know, you you think it's going to take you to bake that pie, for instance. Um, go a little bit deeper into it earlier. Prepare yourself earlier, and it's actually going to make everything else so much easier. The most important and probably most difficult thing that we have to do as human beings is get over that little voice in our heads, that little sense of friction in our minds that's trying to hold us back. If we can work our way through that, we can overcome so much more than we ever think uh, is possible. Okay, so enough of my soapbox about uh, block scheduling. Let me just jump into a little bit about what this week has been like. So as I mentioned earlier, my program is an asynchronous program. That means that most things in the program happen uh, throughout the week, essentially, regardless of time. I could do them at noon or I could do them at midnight. There are deadlines that you have to meet in the program, but otherwise it's very, very free form and when you get things done. There are a few group assignments as well uh, because, you know, information sciences is actually heavily focused on group work, that is something that you need to take into account. So when the program says asynchronous, you might think, huh, okay, I'll just work completely on my own. But you actually do have to consider a lot of collaborative time in there and figure out ways to make that work too. Uh, I just did one of the first lessons with a group just recently and it was a blast and we all managed to do it asynchronously using Google Docs. So thanks to technology, it's actually easier to do that sort of thing than pretty much ever before. My, in my experience of the first week, 
week is that there is a ton of information to take in all at once. This is where I am thanking my stars that I have two things going for me. One, I started really early getting as much information as I could together for myself. I was on LinkedIn Learning, you know, a month ago, starting to work on learning databases for myself. I was reading books about librarianship six months ago. I was doing all of this work to prepare myself. So a lot of what is um, coming up in this first week here is stuff that I already actually know pretty well. And that's actually really exciting because it's not about me being able to skate through the first week. It's actually about me being able to pay more attention to the little things. Normally with this big information overload, I'd be just grasping everything that I can, trying to fit as much into my brain as possible, trying to just take everything in so that I can do well in the course. But because I actually know a lot of the material that's being taught or know how the material uh, functions or know the tools that are being taught, I don't have to worry about focusing so much on those broad questions. I can ask the really hard questions. So not just how do I turn this tool on, but what do these specific features within the tool do? Not just how do I respond to this concept, but what is the deep inquiry behind the concept? And it also leaves me a little bit more time for some of the fun aspects of the program as well, which there are actually so many of. The other thing that I'm really grateful for is that I have a knowledge capturing system. And so that's the other piece of this, is being able to have some way to capture all of the information efficiently, search through it, move through it, work through it. Not just your notes, but everything that you possibly need to know about your program and, and everything you're learning as you're learning it. So there's a lot of information there, a lot of metadata to use an information science term uh, <laughs> that you need to be thinking about when you go, go into something like this. Uh, so I'll go over tools that I use in other videos later on. I showed you a few of them in the last video, but those tools are constantly evolving. I deeply dislike Notion's lack of privacy features. It's uh, an inherently insecure system and that really bothers me. So even though it's incredibly powerful and I like using it for my home life and some other things, I also don't wanna put anything sensitive on it because it's inherently insecure. Um, so I actually end up having to use this whole little conglomeration of apps. But I'll talk to you about that sort of thing in other videos. So things are very busy and packed in this first week, but they're also very exciting. There's a lot of information to take in, but if you have the right system to capture that information and if you've prepared well, then it's actually pretty reasonable and you can kind of spend your time having having some fun with it. Pretty much everything in my Maslow's Pyramid is being taken care of right now. I work out every day, I spend some time with my friends, spend some time with my wife, spend some time with my pets. I feel incredibly lucky and grateful to be able to do all of this. However, I know that none of this would be possible if I hadn't diligently set things up beforehand. So that is the core of this video. Set things up beforehand, make sure that you're ready as early as possible, and then create structures for yourself so that you can succeed. All right. That's gonna be it for today's video. I will upload another video soon, I promise. Um, more videos, more content. Let me know in the comments section if there are things that you're especially curious about. You can ask me questions about my program, ask me questions about information sciences in general, questions about structuring your life. I'm happy to literally answer any of those things. Any questions that come in that are um, that are meaty, that are something that I can talk about, I will respond to in my future videos. So that way we can start a little bit of a dialogue back and forth. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope that if you liked this video, you will click the thumbs up button. I also hope that you'll subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Go easy. And if you can't go easy, go as easy as you can.